So besides safety, we need, we cannot heal. This is some, some work that came out of studying, uh, studying the effects of the LA earthquake in 1994, in studying uh, the effects of 9-11. Uh, we, you know, the neuroscience uh, community looked at who's healing and who isn't after an event like that. And what became more and more clear was that those who isolated, watched reruns of the towers going down after 9-11, for example, those who isolated did not do well after the event. But those who engaged in community, those who became part of a healing effort, a rebuilding effort after the earthquake and down at ground zero gave water out, just became part of a community so that they weren't alone. Those are the people who, who healed. So we know that we don't heal in isolation. So those of us who want to do a self-guided um, healing, are going to bump up against a wall. There, it's not that there isn't going to be progress made, but the, the transformation comes from being in relationship with another person, being in community with another person or group of people that is witnessing and reflecting and guiding and reminding and loving, you know, just through connection. So it's really important that we understand that healing happens in community. So we want to be in community with our children, with our students, and we want to know if we're individual uh, seeking our own healing, that we really do need to go outside of ourselves and have someone help guide us through that process. And it can be a friend in some cases, right? It can be uh, a community of people. And in many cases, it can be a practitioner, you know, a therapist that really knows what they're doing in terms of uh, focusing on sensations, right? Speaking the language of the animal brain. So we're finding that traditional talk therapy really has its limitations uh, with the healing of trauma and chronic stress. Um, not that it isn't useful for other problems. Um, and that it isn't, it's not that it isn't somewhat useful towards the healing of trauma and chronic stress, but as far as full transformation and fully healing, it has to come through a somatic modality that is speaking the language of the animal brain. So there really has to be a focus on sensations in the healing process. So uh, other really important resources uh, besides safety and community. I, I should say, I do just want to give a special call out to educators that we really do have a very uh, special opportunity as educators to create community in our classrooms and on our school campuses for children, for so many, and it's a growing number of children who do not feel like they're in relationship or connected or in community at home on the street or anywhere else. It, it, a lot, they feel very disconnected and very scared. And they, we need to show them that they belong to us, that they belong to us. So, I, you know, just working many, many years in the school system, so many of our students don't feel like they belong anywhere. And, um, and when that happens, of course, they gravitate towards things like gangs where their animal brain is going to be normalized, right? Because everybody's in their animal brain and they're going to say, yeah, man, I get it, you know, right? Because if we're coming at them from a place of, you know, shaming them and, and making their, their animal tendencies uh, abnormal to them, then they're, you know, we're not getting them. We're not getting them. They're feeling more alienated from us and more driven to find community somewhere else. So we really, as educators, have to, as teachers especially, I think. I mean, and administrators, administrators really have an opportunity to create community in the school. But teachers can't wait for that to happen. Each teacher can make a community in their classroom where you belong to each other, you know? And we're going to figure this out, and you get 
chances to repair. Because you know what? At home, in my life, with my loved ones, there shouldn't be a finite number of chances that I get to repair when I say and do things that I regret. So in here, in this classroom, in our community, there isn't a finite number of chances. You just get to keep repairing because you belong to me and I belong to you and we're going to figure this out. That is a whole other way of being on the planet that's really missing. And it's really the part that's missing in education to the point where, you know, I said earlier, you know, if you're not creating that sense of community and relationship and safety in your classroom, then hang up your teaching and join up with uh, how we're going to create more prisons because it's, it's exactly, we've got to start connecting the dots between what our children aren't getting from a very early age at home and then what they're not getting in the school system and how that relates to dropout and certainly then street violence and, and, and then of course, you know, it's a trajectory. We, we can't ignore the trajectory that exists. So, safety, relationship, community, and this thing that we keep coming back to, sensory awareness, speaking the language of sensations. That is very powerful. And as parents, we can teach it to our children. As educators, we can teach it to our students. You know, as healers, we need to be, you know, really teaching sensory awareness, modeling it and teaching it to our clients. And certainly for our own individual well-being, we've got to know and feel and pay attention to and honor what goes on from the neck down. So, you know, this goes back to Eugene Gendlin's work that, you know, I'm sure many of you uh, know about Eugene Gendlin who created Focusing, right? Wrote the, bo the book Focusing. So in the late 70s and early 80s, he wanted to understand why is it that some people you know, some of the people who go to therapy or counseling get better. And some of the people who go to therapy or counseling just never get better, right? And he controlled for all the variables. He controlled for, you know, SES and education level and all these different variables, controlled for those things, and was able to isolate the single most important difference between those who got better in counseling and those who didn't was sensory awareness was that the clients that were able to express, gosh, I have that memory or that thought, right, which comes from the neocortex, I have that memory or that thought, and it really makes me feel angry, the feeling or limbic brain, right? And when I get angry, I notice that I get really tight and really hot and really constricted and real, right? That's sensory, that's sensation, that's the animal brain. When all three parts of the brain are engaged and part of the therapeutic process, then we have a whole brain that's integrating and moving from A to B, getting well. So we've got to have this sensory awareness. So we have to have it for ourselves because we can't give away anything. You know, we can't give away something we don't possess. So we have to have sensory awareness and then we have to share that and model it. So teaching people, right, which I do with my son. What do I do with my son? He starts to get angry and I say, where are you feeling that? You look so tight in your hand. And he goes, yeah, mama, I can feel my hand just wants to make a fist. I just wanna, I just wanna hit something, right? And he can feel the tightness and he goes, I'm hot, mama. I say, yeah, your face is red, honey. And he's connecting, he's feeling the sensations. And I say, gosh, let's go run outside in a garden and find some bugs, yeah. So. We take that energy and we go do something with it. We get into nature to balance out that experience because the second you're in nature, it's like, oh, oh, look at that bird. Look at that, right? You can, you can feel it. It's okay. It's not that we're running from it. It's that we want to balance it out. We want to get our feet in the grass and get grounded in the grass. So you're feeling that and can you feel your feet on the ground? Can you feel them connected? Do you feel your toes in the grass? Yeah, yeah. And what are you noticing happens when you feel your feet in the grass? You feel your little toes in the grass blades. What do you notice? Ha! Ah. Ha, ah, like I just want to go find some bugs. Like he just notices that it's gone, right? That it just, it just, and I say, yeah, that tightness kind of goes away, doesn't it? Yeah, you know?